Hello everyone, welcome to Coffee Break Q&A. My name is Michael Moret. Coffee Break Q&A is your opportunity to ask your Bible questions. You ask the questions, I'll try to give you the answer. Keep your questions Bible-related, as I mention on every broadcast, because this ministry, like Scripture verse by verse, is all about the Bible. I don't want to get off into other things, just the Word of God. And so we have a question today from a listener, a man who writes, Hi, Pastor Mike, my prayers are with you and Scripture verse by verse and Aaron. And for those of you who do not know, Aaron is my son. He goes on to ask this question, Can you explain what the oneness or the unity in John 17 is supposed to look like? That's a very good question because I think a lot of people, when they read that, it puzzles them because they see Jesus praying for a unity and the church seems to be so divided. So I will try to answer this question and I think the best way for me to do it is to look at a few of those verses, verse by verse. So let's begin in John chapter 17, reading in verse 20. Now this is Jesus' prayer. He's praying, number one, for his apostles. But then he switches gears in verse 20, and he says, Neither pray I for these alone. I'm not just praying for the apostles now, he's saying to God, but for them also who shall believe on me through their word. So in his prayer, on this night of his, his betrayal and arrest, Jesus here in verse 20 begins to pray for you if you are a Christian. In fact, he prays for everyone who will believe in him through the apostles and their message. Their message being the New Testament, which was written by the apostles. So he's praying here for everyone who gets saved by reading the Bible. He's praying for all Christians. Let's look at verse 21. What does he pray? That they all may be one as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that you have sent me. Jesus prayed for his church to be one, as he and the Father are one, and it is one. In that sense, the church is united. And I can hear someone say, wait a minute, what are you talking about, Marat? If we were one, then there wouldn't be so many denominations, right? No, that's wrong, because that's not what Jesus was praying for. That's not the type of unity that Jesus is asking for in this prayer. The true church, remember this, the true church has nothing to do with denominations. It has nothing to do with buildings. It has nothing to do with any of that. The true church is an invisible church that consists of all real Christians. If you have repented and you have received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, then you might be Lutheran, you might be Presbyterian, you might be Baptist, you might be Pentecostal, but you're one with every other person who has repented and received Jesus Christ because that's the church, the true church, the invisible church, which consists of all Christians is united, not in an ecumenical sense where everyone throws away biblical truth and tries to find some common denominator that they can agree on, regardless of how silly and insignificant it might be. That sort of ecumenical unity is not God's will. And actually, it's contrary to Scripture to think that God wants professing Christians to have an outward unity where clear biblical truth is cast aside in order to keep peace. That's not God's will. The unity Jesus is praying for is a spiritual unity, where, as Scripture teaches, we are all members of the body of Christ. Every true Christian is spiritually united as a member of Christ's body and spiritually united in our relationship with Jesus. 22. And the glory which you gave me I have given them, that they might be one, even as we are one, I and them, in you and me, that they may be made perfect in one. The same kind of unity that exists between the Father and the Son exists between genuine born-again Christians. That's why you can meet a real Christian for the first time, 
someone you have absolutely nothing in common with except a close relationship with Jesus, and immediately you experience a bond with them at the deepest level. It's that unity that Jesus prays for here and the Father has granted. If you want to send me your Bible question, send it to scriptureversebyverse at gmail.com, scriptureversebyverse at gmail.com.